more. Last time, after finishing up some provisioning, we said goodbye to Boot Key Harbor and pointed our bow towards the Bahamas. We had five days to get from Marathon to the Abacos to meet up with my sister and her boyfriend, who was planning to propose. We had hoped to be there already, but alas, our Bimini project had taken much longer than we thought. It's a dangerous game to play, making plans, traveling by sailboat. Fingers crossed, we can make it. After a day of bashing into the wind and me fighting seasickness, we decided to drop the hook for the night at Long Key and take on the Gulf Crossing the next day. Some big waves. Yeah. And now the extended outlook for the period Sunday through Friday and in Astrid, current risk should continue for the Atlantic beaches into early next week. A few thunderstorms are possible on Sunday afternoon into Monday. You look like a professor. Yeah, hey, your podium. Yeah. Chance of showers. The marine forecast for the following marine location, Florida Bay. Tell me about the trip so far. Just about um, ready to forget what we're gonna say. We're getting ready to cross the Gulf Stream, like in the next hour or so. We've been hugging the reef just off the coast of Florida for the last, well, for the whole day, pretty much, feeding into it. I think the worst was this morning, and now that we're out more in deeper water, we're in like 100 feet, probably 100, 200 feet. The waves would become more rolly and less steep and a little softer. And now the boat's more doing this instead of like smashing. So if we Still can- Still moving around all over the place though. Yeah, yeah. If we can hold that across the Gulf Stream, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll make it. We've both been a little bit nerve wracked about this because this is the biggest longest, deepest crossing we've ever done. So, and there's horror stories about crossing the Gulf Stream. And, uh... We've both actually been a little seasick. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about these yesterday. I put them on this morning along with taking some bonine. I've been pretty good today. I actually offered to go downstairs for Kirk a few times when usually I'm always the one saying, hey, can you go downstairs and get this or do this or whatever. So, um, today it's been pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all a little woozy here and there. It's always the worst in the sun. It's always the yeah. worst when the sun is like high. I think the sun is what gets me the most. Yeah. Captain's log, 0800 416 19. 
nice. <laughs> so after 20 hours of beating into the winds across the gulf into like four to seven foot waves. Beating like scrambled eggs. And a small craft advisory, no less. And dodging multiple cruise ships. And just all together wasted, blown out, tired. I think we were the only dumbasses that made this journey last night in a sailboat. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say so. I decided to pull out the camera and wax poetical about sailing and about how loud sailing is. However, we made a technical error and plugged the microphone into the headphone and got zero audio. And Lauren is checking that now. Checking to make that sure right it's now. In the right spot. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I never considered or thought about how loud sailing actually was. You know, you think the engine is loud and you're, you know, motoring out of the harbor and you, you know, hoist the sails and flick off the engine and it's just ah, silence, the hiss of the water moving under the boat. And it can be. That's but downwind sailing for you. That's downwind sailing. When you're beating into the wind, the wind is just whistling through the rigging. I just would argue howling. It yeah, it wasn't like, whistling, it, it was, was like, howling. Ooh. It was eerie, yeah. almost. Canvas on the dodger and the bimini is fluttering. The wind in your ears is just It's just loud. The boat is creaking and groaning and making noises. Like, everything is just so loud. thought about that before and so the ironic thing is while recording all of this it's absolutely dead silent because we had no microphone I started by thinking wow the, the ocean is just so loud but then it's really not it's really just the effect of our us and our boat being there that makes it so loud because if we weren't out there in a boat yeah the waves would be breaking and toppling over but they wouldn't be slamming into the side of the boat and the boat wouldn't be slamming down in the water and pushing the waves back at other waves to have them slap against each other and like it w probably would be pretty calm but we can't experience that because as soon as we're there it's loud Sort of like if the tree falls in the woods, no one will hear it. So does it really make a sound? I think it does. I think a more apt question would be, if there was no boat out in the ocean, would it really make a sound? I think that might actually be no. <laughs> the other thing that I thought was really interesting was we had just broken our topping lift. We had water coming in all over the boat from just beating into the seas all night long. Our starboard side navigation light started flickering because it probably got too much water just blasted in through the side. I was really concerned about the rudder post because it was like banging up and down and the boat was just taking a beating. So I was thinking about the scene in Pirates of the Caribbean. Jack Sparrow is riding in to the dock, standing atop the crow's nest. The boat is just like slowly sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking because it's basically just falling apart and like holds together just long enough so that right as the crow's nest goes underwater, he steps off onto the dock. Here we are making this crossing, and I'm just like, please just hold together, just make it to land. Like, <laughs> okay, we had one top in the break and a little <laughs> bit of water coming through these screws. No, they were thinking. coming through here. They came in through the bow. There was water down. There was water on the floor down here. Yeah, but we like, don't know if that was from our. Yes, water but bed. come on, your imagination runs wild, and <laughs> you know if we look at it in perspective. Yes, it was like not bad at all. Which we can look at it now, because here we are floating. Right. But at the fine. time, yeah. we were in the middle of the gulf, in the middle of the night, in a small craft advisory warning, water coming in through places we had never seen before, bashing into the waves, the bow going under the water like every yeah. 10 and seconds. The, the inability to do much about it if we had to, yeah. like, because we were so exhausted. The gulf had us. It had us. 
good. And the other thing that was really interesting while we're doing captain's log notes here. We, we left because we had, we had winds forecasted to be out of the southeast for the whole first part of the trip. And they were going to shift slightly east for a little bit. But we were like, oh, that's okay because we need to make some north. And then they were going to go more southeast and almost south towards the end. So we thought as we rounded the Keys and through Miami, we'd kind of take this nice S curve over to west end so we're like that's totally fine we'll have south winds it'll be totally easy well we were beating into it pretty much the entire time it wasn't until the middle of the night that i really looked at the compass because it's pitch black you can't see anything there's no no lights of miami anymore no lights from anywhere in the bahamas what kind of tea do you want uh that mint one that you pulled out the other day so we, we had no reference points but as we were like cursing the wind saying why aren't you coming out of the south like you were supposed to I looked down at the compass and realized we were pointing due east, but we were making our, our course over ground was like 40. So our boat was pointing and our sails were set like we were sailing 90 degrees east with a south southeast wind. So it makes sense that we were close hauled, even though we were going almost 50, 60 degrees north of that because the current was so swift pulling us north. It occurred to me if we actually fall off a little bit instead of trying to constantly just beat into the waves and have the current carry us north there's actually a sweet spot where if we turn north we'll actually go more east and that just like was Hello. sort of a mind f in the middle of the night you actually had to turn north to sail more east so it was interesting it was an interesting experience Normally, after a tough overnight sail, we take a rest day. We don't turn around and take off again, especially when there's a front moving in. Are you ready for breakfast? I'm so ready. We had in fact never intentionally gone out sailing in inclement weather. Thing was, the wind was forecasted to die. If we didn't leave now, we were looking at motoring over 100 miles in less than two days to meet my sister. What we didn't know was if we were just making a big deal about this front, or if we were being complete fools to leave port with this forecast. This front had gone through the southeast U.S. and I had read a news report like right before we left that this frontal system spawned a bunch of tornadoes and a bunch of people had died and like here we are, <laughs> gone off sailing. How are you this morning? Feeling better. I think the weather is breaking up a little bit. I was super nervous. Just, oh God, like, what are we doing? Did we make a terrible Brave decision? Yeah. And we hadn't really seen any boats all morning. Well, one boat coming into the harbor right as we were leaving. And I felt like <laughs> they were probably looking at us like, you guys are dumbasses. We just yeah. came out of the Gulf and you guys are leaving right now. And I'm like, oh God, we're going to be the only idiots out here. Like this front. Just like we were the, yeah. the previous day. For about three minutes I was seriously considering walking over like a thousand dollars to leave the boat in the marina for a week rent a car drive to a ferry take the ferry to Chris and Kelly's Airbnb this is the last time we're meeting anyone anywhere so Chris and Kelly by the time you see this you'll probably be married congratulations <laughs> just know that we worked our asses off to be there for the engagement We've been sailing back to back to back for what? It'll be five days now of like full day sails. This is our fourth day. Okay. So it'll be five tomorrow. It'll be six by the time we get there, I think. Yeah. So 
we left West End this morning, went through a little bit of a channel and a pass here. We are headed east-northeast to get around this point here, and then gonna continue on east to Great Sail Key over here. Until about 11, which is about where our waypoint is, we have winds coming out of the south, which will help us because we're going north a little bit. But at 11, we have an abrupt frontal shift, which is gonna bring wind in from the northeast or the northwest. So we wanna try and get far enough north that we can then be kind of pushed down to Great Sail Key. And it's a race against the clock. We're favoring the north just a little bit, so we've got a little bit of sea room if it does turn early, but we can definitely see it chasing us. calculated that we have about 15 minutes until that's going to sweep over us. It's about four miles away right now. Your mistakes, let them all go. Your broken dreams, your high hopes. Love. Yeah. All right. I want to furl that up most of the way. Sometimes it takes a big Then we got to be ready to dive. Temperature no more. just dropped like 10 degrees. Yeah. Maybe more. Our wind just shifted about 80 degrees. There it is. There's Woo! rain. We need to curl in a little bit more. Look at this wind. Okay. Let it out. Today we made a run of 77 miles. We timed the squall perfectly. We we're out All of the, the channel and in the middle of fairly deep, deeper Bahamas water. So we felt comfortable and past being in it. the point where we could just run downwind when it hit. So it was nice. And we've been downwind sailing all day today. We really needed that after yesterday and the day before. So it's funny because you just said 77 miles. Yeah. And I was thinking. Dang, we did 77 miles today. It felt like nothing. It felt like a 30 some mile day sail. Yeah. It felt so nice. You could think about other things besides your survival and take care of the boat. Because that's how it felt crossing the Gulf Stream. It felt like, okay. It felt like I we were destroying the boat. You that, yeah. I need water, but the water bottle's empty and we have to go down below to get water. Can oh I do God. it? <laughs> <laughs> I 
not oh, no. that. Anything but yeah. that. Yeah, today was glorious. I think it was the first time ever that I've read on the boat while Lauren was sailing. Yeah. That was nice. I chilled. It's cold right now. I think I remember saying, I'm over it. Oh yeah. And you, when, you said, I'm over sailing. When we got into... West End. Yeah, that's right. But that's the weird dichotomy of sailing. Like, the super highs and the super lows. Because here we are, bobbing away all night long with beautiful clear water beneath us. And a, and a wonderful sail yesterday. And a wonderful sail yesterday. Even After the squall. getting through our first sprint. Yeah. That took a lot of, I don't know, what was it? It's, it's just the fear of the unknown. Yeah, exactly, because we just we hadn't done it before. And I think we got lucky. I mean, I think the trade winds kind of broke it up. Yeah, I think the Gulf Stream kind of broke it up. So it, it wasn't as intense as it was over the over yeah, land. That's why it maybe wasn't quite as bad, but clearly it's, it builds up in your mind too. Well, when you wake up and it's literally red skies at morning, yeah. <laughs> it makes you wonder if you're taking a calculated risk or if you're just being fools. And we don't have enough experience to know. Yeah. But we're gaining it. Gaining it. Cheers, love.